Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ndugu mtazamaji wa Shifa Online TV ni siku nyingine tena kuweza kukutana nawe siku ya leo na karibu katika masomo ya leo kitengo cha maisha bora kwa Yatima Project kitengo cha Elimika Project ni kitengo ambacho washirika wakuu ni Al Shifa Muslim Youth Initiative wakishirikiana na Al Shifa TV Radio Salam pamoja na ofisi ya Seneta Mombasa Muhammad Faki na ndugu mtazamaji lengo na shabaha ya kitengo hichi ama kipindi hiki ni katika kumwelimisha yatima na pia vile vile mwanafunzi yeyote yule ana fursa kuweza kuelimika kupitia Al Shifa online TV. Na siku ya leo tutakuwa na walimu mbali mbali wenye tajriba ya hali ya juu ambapo wataweza kukuelimisha katika ile masomo ya upili ama tunasema masomo ya secondary school ambapo tutakuwa tunaongozwa na somo la kwanza somo la fizikia ama physics alafu somo la pili tutaweza kupata somo la Kiingereza ukipenda somo la English. Kwanza ndugu mtazamaji niite Mishi Harun alafu pia kwanza tukianza na mwalimu wetu wa kwanza Uh, bwana Muhammad Ali Taib ambaye atakuwa anatujuza ama kujuza wewe eh, kama mwanafunzi eh, katika lile somo la fizikia. Nikukumbushe tu haraka pesi uh, ni kwa yoyote yule ambaye anataka kuelimika unaweza ukafuatilia masomo haya kupitia Al Shifa Facebook ambapo eh, unaweza ukapata kupitia mtandao wa Facebook Al Shifa uh, Al Shifa kunradi ndugu mtazamaji unaweza ukafuatilia masomo haya kupitia mtandao wa Facebook Al Shifa Online TV na kwa yote ambao pia atakuwa na swali unaweza ukatulika swali la kwako kupitia page ile ya kurasa Facebook ya Al Shifa Online TV na utaweza kupata jibu muafaka tumpate mwalimu wa kwanza bwana Muhammad Ali mwalimu fizikia karibu sana Asante asante dada Mishi Harun okay good afternoon Uh, my students uh, in our today's lesson on the topic of physics okay the topic is under mechanics and the Subtopic is linear motion. Okay. Before uh, I take you through or as I'll be taking you through in physics, uh, I'd like to share the skills which I apply whereby there are four step uh, four step skills whereby we have one you have to visualize we have to conceptualize three we have to analyze and fourth you have to finalize Okay in, in visualizing is whereby you try when given a problem in physics you try to draw a sketch or to figure out how the situation is like in conceptualizing you try to find out with the given hints of the problem which formula or using them how you can find given the known ones how you can find the unknown Then in analyzing is whereby you apply the formula given in arithmetic whereby you work out or you manipulate the numbers then finally in finalizing you ensure to put you, you ensure to put the correct SI units whereby in physics the units given or the units uh, are very important Okay objective objectives of our today's lesson uh, I have two objectives for today whereby first and foremost we'll be defining some of the 
terminologies where we have displacement. Velocity. And acceleration. Then secondly, we'll be looking into the equations We'll be looking into the equations of motion. Okay, let's go right away to the So we know that there are two types of motion. We have linear motion, whereby it's motion in a straight line. Then we have circular motion, whereby it's motion in a circular manner. For example, this is our, our radius, is under a constant distance from the center. You are going round in a circular manner, referred to as circular motion. So for today, we'll be on the linear motion for today's lesson. We know that we have scalar quantities and vector quantities. Vector quantities are the quantities with the magnitude and direction, while scalar quantities are those with magnitude. In scalar quantities, for example, we have like five kgs. It only gives you the magnitude, but no any direction given. Then in mechanics, in mechanics, Direction is very important. So we go direct to the terms and the definition.
first we have displacement. Displacement is the distance covered in a given direction. So it leads us to distinguish between speed and velocity. Velocity is the rate of change in displacement, whereby we have the initial position whereby, for example, in a time graph, displacement time graph, And here we have displacement. We have the time in second and the displacement in meters. So for example, you are asked, so for example, at the beginning, the, maybe it's an object was at zero, so maybe at two, uh, after two seconds, it was at, let's say, two meters. So we have our initial position and the final position. So the rate of change in displacement gives us the velocity. So we should have, let's say it is, we use S2, the, the final minus displacement initial over time taken. It gives us velocity. And whereby when we have it leads us to change in displacement over change in time. So when we are looking for instantaneous velocity, it refers to the velocity at a given point, for example, at two. So you need the more so, it applies when we have like a curve. For example, you are you ask to find the instantaneous velocity at that point. So you are required at this exact point. What is the rate of change in displacement? So definitely, you'll have to have a tangent at that point in order to get the difference. So the difference, the rate of change
So the change in displacement and change in time at this particular curve will give you in the instantaneous velocity, which refers to the velocity at a given point. Velocity also can be given in the form of change, differentiation of displacement and uh, time, given uh, an equation in uh, of position, differentiating it, you get velocity. We'll see it in later uh, relation how displacement, velocity, and uh, acceleration relate. So we have acceleration. This refers the rate of change of velocity. So we have that we use V for our final velocity. V final minus V initial over So the rate of change of velocity, of, uh, we take the final velocity minus the initial velocity. The final velocity is the, we have the initial velocity is the velocity at the beginning maybe of the motion. Then the final one is the final velocity. So the change will give you the change in velocity. Then the time taken, it can also be represented as change in velocity over change in change in time whereby in further relation we'll see that in the application of differentiation acceleration is equal to dv over dt We look to two examples, one of velocity and uh, one of acceleration.
was told that a runner takes a runner moving in a straight line takes 10 seconds to run 10 meters. What is the average velocity? What is the average velocity in this direction? So first of all, as I will be applying our skills, we have like a distance from point A to point B is 10 meters, 100 meters. So we have our S being 100 meters. Then time taken, 10 seconds. So from here to this, he takes 10 seconds. So we ask ourselves, what relation do we have between velocity, displacement, and time? We know that V is equal to change in displacement over change in time, which will be equivalent to 100 meter over 100 second. So the, sim the SI units are very important as you go reach your final answer. So it's equivalent to 10 meter per second or 10 meter So this is our velocity. So we see that the SI unit for velocity is meter per second, and also it can be represented in kilometer per hour. In an example, you ask if a car breaks from 30 meter per second to 20 meter per second in five seconds, what is the acceleration? So our initial, our final velocity V is equal to 20 meter per second. Our final velocity U, our initial velocity U is equal to 30 meter per second and the time taken is equal to five seconds so at point a the car is at 30 meter per second and at point b it breaks to point b whereby it is 
20 meter per second. So, we ask ourselves, what's the relation between final velocity, initial velocity, time, and acceleration? We know that acceleration equals V minus U over T. So, acceleration is equal to 20 minus 30, whereby this is meter per second, meter per second over 5 seconds. So, we have 20 meter per second minus 30 meter per second, which is the final velocity minus the initial velocity, divided by the time taken in the break, whereby you'll get minus 10, minus 10 over 5. So, which is equivalent to minus 2 meter per second squared. So, we get that our SI unit for acceleration is meter per second square. But, what does the sign in the acceleration refers to? For positive uh, quantities, it is acceleration. It is from a lower velocity to a higher velocity. But when coming back from a higher velocity to a lower velocity, we call it deceleration or retardation. We can take a break as we we'll embark into the equations of motions. Physics, <laughs> Na kwa kawaida lazima tumpate fursa a mwanafunzi aweze kupata mapumziko kidogo tu alafu tukirudi tena ataweza kuendelea na somo lile lile la fizikia na usisahau mwanafunzi pale nyumbani ni kwa kwa siku ya leo tupo na masomo mawili somo la fizikia pamoja na somo la Kiingereza yani English kwa hivyo kama nilivyokuambia ni mapumziko alafu baadaye tunaendelea na somo la fizikia na mengine yatafuata zidi kutoa Bila shaka ndugu mtazamaji wa Alshifa Online TV tuta baada kupunga unyunyu kiasi cha haja uh, pamoja na mwalimu wetu wa somo la fizikia na tumai kufikia sasa umeweza kupata mawili matatu kutokana na simo somo hilo na nikwambia tu kwa kifupi kutokana na ile taarifa ya waziri wa elimu George Magoha ni kwamba kufikia sasa shule hazitofungulia hadi mwakani hii inamaanisha we mwanafunzi lazima lazima ukijikaze kibwebwe uweze kupata elimu tosha na pia kujitahidi katika masuala ya elimu ndio maana yake tukaamua kukutafutia njia mbadala ya wewe kuweza kuelimika. Nirudilie tu kwa haraka upesi ni kuwa uh, lengo na shabaha ya kitengo hichi ni kwa ajili ya yatima ndio maana yake uh, unatazama katika hii chat ya mabodi na kuona kwamba kuna maisha bora project. Hivyo basi sio yatima peke yake. Hata mwanafunzi yeyote yule bado ana fursa kuweza kupata uh, uh, masomo kupitia Alshifa online. TV. Tuwezo kumpata mwalimu Muhammad Ali ili yaweze kuendelea na somo la fizikia. Wow. Thank you, thank you. In our next, in our second session, we'll be looking into the equations of motion. Before I continue, in our today's sessions, I've been focused more so on the form 3s, while for the form 4, it will be like a review.
we ask ourselves which are the equations of motion. You know, this session will try to derive them from the definition of acceleration. The first one, the second, and the third equation of motion. We have that acceleration is equal to velocity minus the change in velocity over time taken. So we have the final velocity minus the in initial velocity over time taken. So it gives us acceleration times time is equal to V minus U. Then we're making the final velocity the subject. It will be final velocity is equal to Acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. So we try to make our final velocity being the subject. So we take the others to one side, whereby you have final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. That becomes our first equation of the linear We have that our displacement is equal to average average velocity times time. So S is equal to a half V plus U, where we have our final velocity plus the initial velocity times time. But V is equal to U plus AT. So we replace U V in the equation, which becomes S is equal to a half into bracket U plus U plus acceleration times time times T. which gives us S becomes our second equation of motion. From the definition of average uh, displacement or average velocity is equal to displacement times t uh, over time. So we make displacement the subject where we have displacement is equal to average velocity times time. So from the definition whereby we have average velocity is equal to a half a half v plus u times t but we say that from the first equation of linear motion which gives us final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time we replace the value of u v using this equation into our equation of displacement then we end up getting a fine a u t plus a half a t squared
Our first equation Our second equation S is equal to which refers to displacement ut plus a half a t squared you go to the third We have the time is equal to V minus U over A. This comes from A is equal to V minus U over T. So we make T the subject and A comes down. So from the second, it will be average velocity <coughs> So the average U over two multiplied by the uh, time which is V minus U over A. So when you multiply the difference of two square. To be v squared minus u squared over 2a, which gives us displacement. So we want to make the final velocity squared to be our subject. And this becomes our third. So we have been using the same definitions from velo uh, acceleration and velocity to derive to the third equation of the uh, linear motion. Well, Our third equation becomes v squared to as. Let's look into examples. I'll do one of the example and leave two to be an exercise
We are told that an um, aeroplane lands on the runway with a velocity of 50 meters per second and decelerates. You have to keep a focus on either is it decelerating or accelerating, but in our case here we are told decelerates at 10 meter per second to a velocity of 20 meter per second. Calculate the distance traveled in the runway. So we ask ourselves in the three uh, equation of motion, which one is more applicable? We'll see that we have the initial velocity, final velocity, we have acceleration, acceleration. So the required unknown is displacement, whereby the most applicable will be the third equation of motion. So let's go to the problem. In the given knowns, we have the final velocity. The final velocity is 20 meter per second. The initial velocity, which is 50 meter per second. The speed at which the aeroplane lands on the runway, and they have the acceleration. Let's take that, given that this is the point A of the runway, point B, so this is our aeroplane. As it lands here, it lands at 50, 50 meter per second. It reaches the, uh, the second part of the runway at 20 meter per second. The deceleration why do you put a negative because it is decelerating from a higher velocity to a low velocity that's why we put the negative uh, acceleration so we see that Inserting the values of the final velocity and the initial velocity plus the acceleration, we'll have that 20 So it will be 400 is equal to 2,500 minus 20s. We make s the subject, which will be 20s is equal to 2,500 over minus 400. We'll divide by 20 to remain with s. So our s. This will give us 2,100 over 20, which is equal to 105 meters. So if you choose the right equation of motion, it will give, lead you to the uh, final answer without using another one. Okay, let me let for you two examples which you will try and attempt at your free time.
Ya sah nak malas. Okay, as an exercise, you'll try to attempt the question. A car moving with a velocity of 15 meter per second accelerates uniformly at the rate of 2 meter per second square. To reach a velocity of 20 meter per second. So find time taken. Dist uh, secondly, distance traveled on the runway. Uh, one thing to note is that the equations of motion are only applicable when an object is moving on a uniform uh, with acceleration or velocity. For non-uniform, they are main focus to the uniform acceleration and velocity. Thank you. Bila shaka ndio mtazamaji na tumaye mweza kufurahia masomo. I said, mimi mwenyewe binafsi nilikuwa nashabikia somo la fizikia. Japokuwa asikulisoma vile lakini nilikuwa ni mwalimu Muhammad alikuwa anafundisha nilikuwa nafurahia. Alafu pia vile vile naona ameacha maswali hapa kuwezesha wewe kuona uwezo wako uko wapi. Kwa hivyo tutakuwa ni fursa nzuri ya wewe mwanafunzi nyumbani uweza kuangalia ili swali ukalichanganua ukaweza uh, kujibu muafaka na bila shaka utakuwa unajitambua ama unatambua uwezo wako upo wapi. Hivyo basi ni lazima tukome hapo. Eh, tuweze kupata chakula cha mchana mm, ili tuweze kupata nguvu motisha sawa sawa ili tumpishe mwalimu mwingine wa somo la Kiingereza. Ni wakati wa swala kuswali Alafu baada ya swala tupate chakula cha mchana na bila shaka tutaendelea na masomo yetu kama nilivyokuambia tutakuwa na mwalimu uh, wa Kiingereza ataweza kutujuza mengi zaidi usiondoke okay.